Yeah. Is that it? Okay, and welcome to Extronicle. In this episode, we're gonna build a light gate. So that's like basically um, an infrared sender and receiver, and we use them in combination with each other to detect whether anything got cuts between the beam. Uh, often used um, in situations where you want to do some sort of um, timing to perhaps calculate speed or other things. Uh, so I'll do a, um, a setup where we calculate speed and acceleration in this video. Um, ones you can buy, um, can be reasonably expensive for what they are um, and not as flexible. Um, so you see how quickly um, and cheaply you can do it uh, with equipment that you've got hanging about. Let's just move on to uh, actually assembling the basic circuit. Okay, let's start with the actual infrared receiver. And um, three connections. You see the sensitive side where the bullet at the top is. We've got the positive VCC, and we've got the uh, negative in the middle, and then the outside the signal. So that will go. I think it's low actually when it's detected something. I think I'd have to double check that. Uh, so we're connecting to positive, and so I'm going to use that as my positive rail, and uh, negative rail, and then we're going to connect to pin D2. I think you're using the software, pin D2 for the actual uh, signal uh, detection. Uh, it could be any of the digital pins, it doesn't matter. The so it depends on what your software is doing and where, which pin it's expected to send the signal. So we'll connect up um, uh, ground to the ground line, rail, and we'll connect up positive to the uh, positive rail. Okay, and then we've got the uh, infrared LED, um, cathode, and, uh, um, sorry, that was the anode, then anode, then the cathode, sorry. Um, so I'm going to put a small resistor in with this. Um, when I was looking at wiring this up, a lot of, um, on the internet, um, didn't even have a resistor on it because you put your pulse in it fairly fast. So it doesn't, I don't think, draw too much current from the Arduino because it's on and off so quick. It doesn't draw that much, but I've put a resistor in series with it. And we'll just connect that straight up to uh, pin D3. And, and that's one of the PWM pins, so we can pulse it at a specified uh, frequency. So let's move on to actually um, connect up to the computer. Okay, so you may wonder how we're gonna test the infrared. Well, luckily with most cameras, most uh, smartphones, uh, not all, they'll show it up. There it is, as I've loaded it up, little pink, purpley pink light. Whenever the LED's on, we've got a, a pink light. So um, it's working fine. Um, you don't see that in real life. Um, if you've not got a camera, your eyes don't pick it up because it's infrared. Um, so you don't see it. But with the help of a smartphone or I'm using an actual normal camera film, we, you can do. So that's working fine. Right, okay, so I've got the detection and everything. I've put some software on that will actually light pin 13, which lights like a LED on the nano board, uh, whenever, the, whenever the detector detects the infrared. As you can see, detects in there, finger over. And you can see it's working perfectly as a light gate. However, um, there's some work I did before this, where I didn't, which I didn't actually film, uh, where it just wasn't working. It, it, it would flash every now and again if you sort of moved it quickly across the sensor. Um, and it was not perfect at all. Um, we'll discuss that later. There was a problem with um, the components have been supplied. Um, but we'll talk about that later, but I've got it working. So next job is, is to actually fit the um, sensor uh, and the infrared sender uh, LED into some sort of housing to help uh, stop it picking up spurious So I want, I want the LED to be in an enclosure so it's light is not shining out everywhere. So it's more directed, more focused, more straight on. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually uh, putting a hole in a, in a, a felt tip pen lid, a chunky uh, marker. Just put a hole in it with um, a board cutter. 
um, and I'll try and fit the LED. Doesn't fit when I'm first doing this, so I need to get um, a slightly bigger drill just to widen out the hole a bit. Okay, so now I've got um, a bit of a wood drill. Just gonna open out the hole bit to make it a bit wider so we can actually fit the LED in. And then the LED fits perfectly. Nice and snug. I'll just bend the legs over. I sold a couple of wires on them and then solid zip it up and that's my uh, sender, IR sender. And we can see, we can see the actual um, infrared coming nicely out of it in a straight line. So we plug them both in and make sure they're still working. And then just mount them in a couple of uh, stiff cardboard tubes and we've got ourselves a light gate. Let's do, make some, let's do some experiments. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to work out how to calculate the speed of something that goes past the light gate. So, the calculation for speed was speed equals the distance, the distance something's travelled, divided by the time it took to travel that distance. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a toy car, I'm going to stick a piece of card over the top of it that I know the length of. So we've got the length that we know, the distance of the card, and then when it passes the light gate, we'll start a timer. And then it, when it's finished past the light gate, we'll stop that timer. So we will know the distance it's travelled, which is the length of the card. And we'll know the time it's took to travel that length, that distance, that length of the card. So speed will then become equal to, well, the card's going to be five centimetres long. I'm going to make it five centimetres long. You could make it anything, but you put this into your card. So five divided by whatever time it took for the, you know, the time with the Arduino. So I'm going to use one of the Arduino's internal timers to do that. And that will give us a speed. So we've stuck a piece of card onto a toy card. We're going to send it between these two light gates. In the corner of the screen, you'll see the um, code, which is on the website at www.extronical.com. You'll see the code come up calculating the speed. Sorry, not code, the results from the code. So we've got our light sensor, our light gate, which is the, which consists of the infrared um, emitter, just an LED that emits infrared, and the infrared uh, receiver, so that's sensitive to, uh, well, supposedly sensitive to 32 kilohertz, but later to find out that's been supplied with ones that are sensitive to 36 kilohertz, um, so that was a bit of a puzzle at the time. So between these, whenever the beam is broken, so we've got a little toy car with the five centimeters um, piece of card that's going to break the beam. So the beam is here. So if I give the car a little push, I've also added, sorry, an LED here, a nice big green LED, which you should be able to see even with the wires that are just crossing it, that actually lights up if the sensors can see each other. So if I move this infrared sender, oh, so it's pointing away from the actual receiver, it's gone out. So we can see when it's receiving, it's right there. So as the car goes past, it'll cut the beam, off it goes, and when it comes back out, the beam uh, is redetected. So with that, and we'll look at the code, first of all, we'll go through what we need to actually run this. Um, if you look here, we're using a library called IO Remote. To get that library, simply go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, and up here where it says Filter Your Search, just type in IR remote, they are, it's popped up already. I've installed it already, you just need to click install. I think it probably pop up there, pop up there instead of update. 
uh, and you then have the library. So I include the library there. I mean, this source code will be available on extralocal.com as well as. Um, but in this library, they're using pin three to actually emit the uh, signal out on. Um, but pin two, the detection is up to you. You can connect that to whichever you want, the, the actual um, IR detector, the infrared detector. Uh, but pin three, you're gonna have to use that one. Um, the status on this nano, um, is pin 13, which is what I've connected the big green LED to. Um, the red, little small red LED on the board will is connected to pin 13 as well for status. So basically, that's, I've, I've used that to detect when I'm seeing that infrared signal. Uh, quickly go to setup. So obviously, we're setting up the pins there, and then also, sorry, just at this start here, we use an object called IR send, and we're creating a variable. Uh, we're using an object called IR send, sorry, uh, that's of type IR send class. So basically, um, we've created that um, object there, and here we're saying enable infrared output at 36 kilohertz. We're gonna output some our, um, our results to the serial port, so we'll do there. And we'll just wait for a second, make sure the system's all settled down. And then in our main loop, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna try and calculate the speed of that uh, car as it races past the uh, sensor at tremendous speed past the light gate at amazing speed um, so we've got a little bit of code here so first of all we set the status pin to false so we turn the LED effectively off the green LED has gone off and then here I'm waiting until I detect the actual pulse and if you look at sort of semicolon right at the end of that line there so it's going to go round itself like that over and over again is that line until we detect a pulse, until we detect that signal on the actual uh, infrared detector. Uh, if we do, we'll light the green LED, which is what we do there. So we're all ready to go, basically. That's just been waiting to make sure we're all ready to go, and we are. And then we're waiting for the thing, whatever it is, the car in this case, to cross the beam. Um, and in that case, what we're waiting for is for the detection to stop detecting the infrared. So we were, we've now got a detection, uh, we now are detecting the beam. We've got this far, so we're waiting for it to detect there, in this wire loop. And then we're waiting for it to actually not be seen, which means the car, so let's do that. So imagine the, the beams um, going across here. So we're currently here and it'll be detecting it. So that's a bit true. So the pin detect will be true all the time. So it will keep going round and round here until the car just starts to cross the beam and then it'll go false so then we start our timing so first of all we're going to write uh, the status to turn the green LED off and then we're going to log the start time which is just taking a reading of the uh, millisecond counter um, which might be whatever 5,000, 7,000, 32, 600, 32,672 whatever it might be doesn't matter we're going to start record what the millisecond counter is currently at there and then we're waiting for it to stop blocking the beam. In other words, to have gone through the beam. So at this point, digital read, pin detect, we're waiting for it to go true. So while the beam's being blocked, it's false. So it's gonna keep going round there, round there, until the car pops out there. At that point, we'll then come on here and we're gonna end the time. So we're gonna have a look at how far the mill is, millisecond counter has actually got. If you're not sure about the mill is, have a look on the internet. We're not gonna go into that detail now. Uh, we're gonna record the end time of what the millisecond counter on the Arduino has got to. So we've got the start time that it started at, the end time, which will mean we now have a result for the total time it took that car to pass the beam by subtracting the start time away from the end time. And that will give us a result in, a result in thousandths of a second. If you want to convert to seconds, which we need to, because we've seen the equation already, um, the equation for speed is distance divided by time, and time is in seconds. Um, we need to divide by a thousand here to actually get that speed in seconds, uh, get that time in seconds, sorry. So we then do a speed calculation. The five is because the length of the cardboard here is five centimeters. So that's what that five is for, distance divided by time. So we've got the distance it's traveled, which is this distance of, of the card divided by the time it took in seconds, and then we've got a speed. So we're gonna print that speed in centimeters per second first. So we give that unit there. And then we'll just do a quick conversion to meters per second, which is the international units for speed anyway. 
uh, meters per second. So to do that, um, we'll just go zero point. There's a slight mistake there. So um, we're going to divide speed. We're going to calculate it in meters now. So the distance actually, as you can see, there was a slight error in the code there left over. Um, it's going to be um, in meters. So to convert centimeters, which is what we had here, to meters, we just divide by 100. So that will become 0 0.05 divided by the seconds. I'll give us a meters per second speed. So we'll upload that, upload that to the Arduino. I wouldn't have normally done, but obviously there was a slight error in there. That's because originally I had a piece of card that was um, 10 centimeters long, 10 and a bit. Um, it was just too big, it didn't need it that long. So I halved it to five centimeters and I forgot to actually update the code um, at that point there for the speed. So we're just uploading. And now we need to open the serial monitor because we're printing our results to that. You could connect up a little uh, screen if you want to. At some point, maybe in another video, I might do that. And it's one of the little cars you can pull back, pull back like that. And we're going to speed up 42.37 centimeters a second, or around about half meter a second, 0 0.42. If I pull it back a little bit more, so I'll do it, hold on, pull, it should go a little bit faster. Here we are, 58.82 or 0 0.59 meters per second. So that about wraps up this episode. Obviously inspired you to make your own light gate. Uh, in a follow-up episode, I'm going to actually look at how you might uh, do acceleration with, again, just one single light gate rather than two. So for now, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.